My name is Nargis Farzad, and I teach Persian at SOAS, University of London. In episode two, we took tentative first steps at reading some very simple Persian sentences, albeit written in the Roman script. I also highlighted some of the many similarities between Persian and European languages. I'd like to introduce you to the Perso-Arabic script now, and let's look at some numbers too. Now, let's look at um, the script a little more formally. Again, we're going right to the left. A lot of, I don't want to turn this into a big, you know, philological or linguistics um, talk, and I'm not really an expert in that field at all, but um, I want you to think that many, many, many of our languages have an original source, or perhaps I should say more correctly, the scripts, apart from the, you know, Chinese, Japanese uh, scripts, have these Indo-European languages, have a script that originates from a much older system of writing. However, the gene pool is as strong as ever. The DNA of this original script is very much there. So let's look at the Phoenician alphabet. And you see the order of those alphabet is very much present in the English alphabet, in the uh, Greek alphabet, and in the Arabic and Persian alphabet that we've borrowed. So if you think about the top heading of these um, letters, then it might assist you to learn them more easily. Maybe it would, it would just remove that, that scary element. It won't be so overwhelming because you really just doing a bit of archaeology and discovering things that mean something to all of us, to all the languages we speak. Okay, so if you think it might be easier to think about the Greek or the uh, uh, English order, almost all these alphabets start with this alpha beta, so alif ba, <coughs> the Persian Arabic order, alpha beta, a, b. This system is also known as the abjad. So you have the alpha, um, alpha, beta, going right to the left, alpha, beta, gamma, delta. So you have an A, A, B, C. Look at the gamma and the C, still very similar change. D, think of D, delta. Even the way we write it, look, can you see the D? If you just slightly turn that delta 90, degrees clockwise, it will look very similar to the D in English and to the Dal in Persian. And in Persian you have these uh, four forms, if you like. So I have given you here 14 of the first 32 letters of the alphabet, and I just want you to take a visual snapshot of this. I'm not going to teach you the script just yet. Often people find it very difficult that, oh my goodness, the structure, you know, you suddenly, one minute you're doing these, you know, top-down letters going vertical lines and then it's now going across and then this hooked shapes, then this tips of an arrow. If we have our alpha, beta, gamma, delta, our aleph, be, jim, dal. Jim is the name of the letter j. The same way the W is the name of the letter W. And then if I put them in the columns, so I have my Aleph and my B, number one and two, alpha, beta. Then four letters fall into that pattern. Then I have my Jim, like gamma. And then I have this four hooked letters. Then I have five letters that have the shape of my delta, if you like, that they're all very similar, not identical, but very similar. But in these patterns of the beta and gamma, if you like, 
Really, the only thing that distinguishes them are the number of dots or no dot at all. So I hope that removes a little bit of inhibition if you do not know the uh, Perso Arabic script, that it's really doable. You can really take steps with a bit of practice and perseverance, you'll get there. So now let's look at making a word. Let's look at one of these ancient letters, this sin, this S, which is like a, a W, if you write a very soft, curly W writing, um, or like the edges of a doily, some lace work. This comes from the old Phoenician, a Phoenician alphabet, and its name, sin, was really a word that used for teeth as well. And look here, we're very sensible. Look at the shape of the teeth. It really is the S. And then I want to greet you in writing to say salam. So I've put my diacritic. That's my little A. So S is this letter, which looks like the teeth. L, as it happens, just a mirror image. This is the joinable L of the Latin L, my long O, O, and an M. So, salam, going right to left. Let's see how that is written. If you see, this is not a very pretty shape, just looks like three sides of a, um, a square, but often, it's written in a much more beautiful way. So that was just a little demonstration. And here we are at the bottom of the image. If you look, that is an uh, Imperial Aramaic S. It happens to have a dot there. This is a Phoenician uh, sin. And look, if you turn it 90 degrees clockwise, here is the Greek letter S. And of course, greeting in all the languages and from the poster, Salam Bambai, Salam Mumbai. Let's look at another aspect. When you start learning the script, think about the way you're writing. You uh, pick your pen up. Are you doing an anti clockwise when you write your? B, lowercase b or uppercase, you do your line down, then you have these clockwise hoops. When you write your W in English, I've chosen a font to give me a very curvaceous W. Here you are, think about the way you write it. It goes anti-clockwise. You come down, curve, anti-clockwise, up again, down, anti-clockwise, up again. In Persian, the beginning of that S letter that I mentioned is clockwise. So you come down in a clockwise shape. And there it is. We have a website which we've been developing for a long time, led by uh, SOAS, and very much in close collaboration with University of St. Andrews in Scotland, and then uh, University of Cambridge, called Persian Language Online to enable you to provide a resource for you to learn Persian privately on, in your own time. And one of the most um, uh, challenging aspects of learning Persian, as I said, was learning the script. So we wanted to really create these animations that would enable you to learn, to watch how it's written, pause it and repeat it. So I'm just going to link to the letter S on that website, and I hope it works. And I hope you'll hear the pronunciation of it. If not, I'll read it. Sin. Sar. So what it said there, was the name of the letter, letter sin, and then it follows with an a diacritic, sar, with a re, sar, meaning 
head. Let's move to the next and we'll go. And remember, Persian is a cursive script. It means compulsory joint up, not all letters. Those letters that fell under the delta uh, list, the D and the R, those seven, uh, those six of them, five of them rather, and two other letters stand alone. These are some of the, so you know, you take the pen, you come down, it's curved, and you remember to put your dots. This hooked ones, these are like some utensil almost hanging off a line. And you always have a baseline. The letters either sit on it or just hang off it. And they're big round bellies just sort of, you know, hang off it. So up you go, you pick the pen up, you go in the clockwise fashion, you reach the line, and look, now you change direction is anti-clockwise. I said that the Persian alphabet started with Aleph, Alpha. It ends with a letter Y. And Y, and which looks in a minute, I'm going to switch to another document, looks, doesn't it? Like you try to turn in that. 90 degrees anti-clockwise is like Y in the English um, alphabet, Y. And like Y, it can pronounce as a Y or an E. You can say my or play has that Y, or you can say happy or many or very. It has that E sound. Same in Persian. It could be mahi. How about the fish, the Hawaiian fish, mahi mahi, which I think is like a doroda, or it could be pronounced as a ye nay, like um, the reed flute. And here are the list of the letters of the alphabet. You can find these on many websites on our site, and I fully recommend you to follow this link and visit this website full of animations for simple um, discussions and it takes you all the way up to lower intermediate level. There are many other websites. I never like to encourage anyone to cheat, but I'm going to show you a couple of websites. If you know the word in English, so for example, now after this lesson, you know the word madar, you know dochtar, you know, Ast, you know, setare, you know, barodar, you can write apartman, you know, dar. So, you know, khub, for example, good, dost for a friend. And you might want to write this in Persian, but you still haven't learned the script. So what to do, what to do? Let's visit one of these cheating sites. And I hope it will work. I share it with you, and if we go here, I hope it is going to work. And here we are. That's one of the websites. Actually, I meant to open the other one. Um, here, you just have the letters. You can just click them. For example, you wanted to do moda. You find your M, and you find your R and you find your tip of the arrow Z and your R and it's, it's written it um, for you. But I want to share another website with you. This website, it says that you, know, you don't know, you, 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 know, you don't know uh, the letters. So it tells you type on your English keyboard and the editor will do the rest for you. So we had asked, let's try that. I'm silly, of course, by mistake, I'm still in my Persian language. So here we are, asked, and it's done it for you. Magically changes. Let's do dost for you. However you pronounce it, it can guess what it is. Let's do setare for you. And here it does it for you. 
Before I end this talk, I want to tell you something about the days of the week in Persian, and I'm going to teach you five numerals, five numbers in Persian from one to five, and so you can order the days of the week. And you might think this is a very strange thing. You know, why would I need the uh, numbers to have the days of the week? Before we get to the days of the week, there are, um, uh, again, I want to draw your attention to the similarity of numbers. The numbers that you use in the West are known as Western Arabic numerals. These are used a lot actually in the Arab world too. So, you know, they no longer use the Eastern numbers that we use. The origins of these numbers are actually from India. So they really correctly should be Indo-Arabic numbers, if you like. But of course, they came through Iran, the Arab Middle East, North Africa, and to the West. So let's look at them. Number one, before I give you the name of it, obviously is a uh, universal image um, that almost anywhere in the world, you know, this will be recognized as one unit. How about two? What you see on the screen here is the Eastern Indo-Arabic numeral. Let me see, what if I grab it and try to turn it 90 degrees anti-clockwise? Do you recognize it now as your Western Arabic number? You need to nip off a bit of that tail, but here is your two. Let's have a go at numeral three. Let's turn that just, oh, turn that down at 90 degrees anti-clockwise. Here is your Western three numeral. The same thing actually works with number four, two. If you turn it, you see that with a little bit of imagination, that's the Western digit number four. What about number five? Number five, its name in Persian is Panj, which again, uh, you will hopefully recognize in the name of a region or rivers, you know, Punjab, Punjabi name of a language. And again, if you hold your palm up, I don't have a particularly chunky hand, but that's really, there is your panj, and panj means your claw, your hand that can grab, so with the five digits. So you have that base with the five digits up there. So let's learn the names of these numbers and days of the week. So number one, its name is Yik. Before C, number one, Yik asked. Yik. Can you repeat after me? Yik. Very good. Number two, Do. Do, like, you know, Do, a deer. Do. Can you say that? Do. Almost a D-O-W sound. Do. Number three is C. A very soft S with just a little air rhyming with cafe, se. So, so far we had yek, and what about two? Do, se. Number four, chohar. Number four, two syllables. So, yek, do, se, each word, just one syllable. Chohar, four syllables. Number four is chohar. And five, I'm sure you already remember, because of its appearance in all the other names, panj. Number five is panj. Should we run through it one more time? Yek, do, se, chahar, panj. Very good. In order to make our days of the week, we now need a day name for the first day of the week. Persian week starts on a Saturday. So Saturday is the start of the school week, working week, etc. And the weekend are Thursday, Friday. So we start on Saturday. 
And we use a name for a sort of like an old Sabbath name for this, which is Shambe. So Saturday is Shambe. In fact, it's spelled with an S, a, you know, sh sound, a N B. But if you try to pronounce an N before a B, often it comes out as an M. So what you hear is Shambe. Shambe is Saturday. So Sunday is one Saturday. I Saturday plus one day. So now you know why I need this number. So tell me, if Saturday is Shambe, Saturday and one day will be Yek Shambe, one plus Saturday. Shambe, repeat after me, Shambe. Very good. Now Sunday, Yek Shambe. So what's Monday? Very good. Do Shambe, Do Shambe. Does that ring a bell? In the names of capital cities in the world, capital of Tajikistan, Dushanbe. So we had our Shambe, Saturday, Yekshambe, Sunday, Dushanbe, Monday. I now want Wednesday, four days after, day four after Saturday. Very good, Chahar Shambe. And I want day five after the start of the week, my first day of weekend in Iran, Pan Shambe. And of course, since the Islamic times, the Friday, which has always been in Iran, has always been a day of communal get together for worship and prayers. And that has its Arabic now, Jum'e, which I think you hear in um, many other languages referred to as the Friday. Shall we run through this one more time? First day of the week, Shambe. One day after that, Yek Shambe, Do Shambe, Se Shambe, Chahar Shambe, Pan Shambe, Jum E. Very good. So, what day of the week is today? You tell me. Thank you very much for joining me. You've been an amazing audience, and I hope to see you again soon. Felan, Khoda Hafiz, Khoda Negahdar.